Given Magic Johnson and Erletha Cookie Kelly's love story began when they were both students at Michigan State University. While Cookie was committed to him from the start, Magic was too busy giving his dangalang to every damn body. Oh, hell no. This is a story about lies, infidelity, two canceled weddings, and a health diagnosis that would flip their lives upside down. Law, this is gonna be messy. Before we dive deep into other people's business, don't forget to scoop up something to munch on at rrgsnacks.com, our online concession stand that has an assortment of beef and bacon jerky, blue raspberry licorice, RRG coffee mugs, and gummy sour bears. Those gummy bears bussin', girl. As a teenager, Cookie Kelly didn't know much about basketball. But after heading off to Michigan State University, she found out who Magic was because he was the big man on campus. Her roommate decided she wanted to shoot her shot, and Cookie didn't care because she had her sights set on another guy on campus anyway. One night, Cookie and her friend Becky, who was on the gymnastics team, hit up a nightclub. Becky was friends with Magic, so she introduced him to Cookie. They exchanged hellos, and then Cookie made a beeline for the dance floor. By the time they turned on the lights, Cookie was exhausted. She made her way to her jacket, which she had left on a table near Magic. She quickly told him it was nice to meet him, and that's when Magic stopped her and said, why don't you give me your number? This ninja. Cookie was confused because they had only spoken briefly the whole night, but Magic told People Magazine he was watching Cookie on the dance floor the whole night. With his creepy ass. <laughs> So Cookie knew her roommate was interested in magic, but she gave him her dorm telephone number anyway. Then they went their separate ways. It was time for Christmas break, so they went back to their hometowns for three weeks. When Cookie returned to campus, she stepped inside her dorm and the phone was ringing. She answered it and it was magic, of course. Lord, here we go. Here we go. Her roommate gave Cookie her blessing, and Cookie started to fall for Magic immediately. She told Mocha Man Style website that Magic took her to a steakhouse for their first date. They chatted away like they were old friends, and Cookie said she fell in love. On the first date, girl? It must have been that steakhouse. Good thing it wasn't the Cheesecake Factory. Things could have turned out different. <laughs> After their meal, he asked if she wanted to go to his uncle's house to listen to music. When they arrived, his entire family was there having a party, and Magic introduced Cookie to everyone. Then they sat down on a couch in the living room, listened to music, and sipped on soda. After their first date, they were stuck together like glue, but they still weren't official. One day, Magic came down with an illness. Oh, Lord, this is getting messy. Cookie stopped by his dorm room unannounced to check up on him. And when she walked in, there was a girl inside wearing a bathrobe. Oh, hell no. After an awkward silence, the girl left, and Magic insisted the girl was just a friend. But you say she's just a friend. Uh. But you say she just a friend. Cookie wasn't really buying it, but she told him it was time to define their relationship. And Magic responded, you're my girl. Boy, stop lying. In an Instagram post, Magic wrote that after three months of dating, he told Cookie and his parents that he would marry her. But their road to saying I do was a hot, stankin' disaster. Cookie found out that Magic went to a sorority ball with another girl. And once again, he told Cookie the girl was just a friend. Come on, y'all, sing it with me. But you say she's just the friend. Uh, but you say she just the friend. Oh, magic, you shall be lying. <laughs> Cookie didn't believe it, so she put her foot down and told him he needed to choose who he wanted to be with. And, well, magic picked the sorority girl over Cookie. Bye, Ashy. The sorority girl followed him to Los Angeles when he got drafted by the Los Angeles Lakers. As for Cookie, she finished up her degree at Michigan State, moved back in with her mom and brother, and landed a job in Ohio. She began dating, but every time she tried to move on, the phone would ring, and it was always magic. This ninja. He dumped the sorority girl Bye, and told Cookie she should move to Los Angeles since she wasn't happy being in Ohio anyway. She turned him down, but she wasn't done with him entirely. Of course she wasn't. That's just too much like right. They began a long-distance relationship, and soon after becoming a couple again, he revealed to Cookie that he was the father of a three-year-old boy named Andre. I know you lying. Da this ninja. Damn, Magic. 
God damn. The child was conceived during a period when Magic and Cookie had broken up, and the child's mom was Magic's sister's best friend. Oh, he was just sticking it everywhere, huh? Cookie learned to accept the love child because her love for Magic was so strong. She better than me, girl. She is better than me. A year later, Magic and Cookie were spending the summer in Michigan when he proposed. Cookie said yes, and an hour after accepting his proposal, she drove back to Ohio, and Magic went back to Los Angeles. Oh, hell. I can see the writing on the wall. This ain't gonna be good. She started planning their wedding, and after discussing which church they would have their ceremony in, they hung up the phone. Then Magic called her right back and said, I can't do it. You can't do what, Ninja? And just like that, he called everything off. Now he need his ass beat. After a few years had passed, she started dating a new man. The man was at her house when the phone rang. It was Magic, of course. Why she didn't change her number? Hmm. Damn. When she told him she was busy with company, Magic didn't take it well at all, even though he was dating someone else at the time. This ninja. Cookie continued seeing her new man up until New Year's Eve when she realized she was still in love with Magic. Magic called to wish her a happy new year the very next day, and he revealed he was single too. He told Cookie, I want my girl back. This ninja. And after four years of being apart, they decided to rekindle their romance. Girl, I'm getting whiplash. I am dizzy. They were still long distance lovers at the time, and Magic suggested she should move to LA so he could determine if she could fit into his lifestyle. Say what now? Cookie agreed, but she got an apartment of her own and a job to maintain some kind of independence. Now you a smart cookie. <laughs> you see what I did there? In 1990, after one year of being back together, they headed to Miami for NBA All-Star Weekend, and Magic proposed to Cookie again. She said yes, and he began planning a low-key wedding for them. She ordered her dress from New York City, and Magic told her all she needed to do was show up at the ceremony. Mm -hmm. Now, what woman doesn't want to plan her own wedding? This ninja don't know nothing about planning no wedding. And then one day, while sitting in his car in front of Cookie's apartment, Magic told her, oh, I can't do this. God. This ninja is crazy. Damn. Not this again. He asked for the five-carat ring back, but Cookie was more annoyed than devastated. She refused to give him the ring and told him, We can cancel the wedding, but we're staying engaged. You cannot humiliate me again. Gary, you already look goofy as hell. According to People Magazine, Magic announced the end of their engagement to the press by saying he wouldn't get married until he divorced himself from the game of basketball. When is that gonna be? However, Cookie had a plan of her own. She still showed up to his games, called him to confirm dinner plans, and carried on as if nothing had happened. Cookie had her eyes on the prize, didn't she? She said Magic tried to ignore her at first, but soon enough, he fell back into their normal routine. Cookie said that every now and then, he would lean over and jokingly whisper in her ear, give me that ring. And she would respond, nope. <laughs> they sound like dumb and dumber. Cookie was aware of Magic's yearly solo trip to the Bahamas when he would recover from the grueling playoffs at the end of every season. But the weekend before his trip, he would also throw a pool party. This time, the party was going to be at the home he and Cookie built together. Magic was already living in the home, and Cookie planned to move in after they tied the knot. No wives were allowed at the party, and Magic had a strict all-male invite list, aside from some exotic dancers and groupies for entertainment. The other players' wives called Cookie and begged her to convince Magic to cancel the notorious party. Cookie tried, but Magic wouldn't budge. In her memoir, Cookie said he hung up in her face numerous times. Deep down inside, she wondered if he would end their relationship again. Girl, you should have ended it or moved your ass into that house. <laughs> Three days later, he called her from the Bahamas. He didn't confirm whether the party took place or not, but he did tell her that after thinking things through, he was ready to get married. Ninja, are you sure this time? Cookie told him to leave the Bahamas, hop on a plane back to LA, and they could jet off to Vegas to seal the deal. But Magic told her she deserved way more than that. On September 15, 1991, they got married in a Michigan church. People Magazine reported Detroit Pistons player Isaiah Thomas, whom Magic used to greet on the court with a kiss, was one of his groomsmen. A kiss? In front of 275 guests, they said their I do's, and then they headed to Malibu for a quick honeymoon. Cookie joined her new husband in Paris to watch him play in the preseason exhibition games. While there, she took a pregnancy test and found out they were expecting. They returned to Los Angeles, and then Magic and his teammates headed off to another preseason game against the Utah Jazz. Less than two months after getting married, Cookie received an unexpected call from Magic, telling her he was on his way home and he had to tell her something. She wondered, why wasn't he in Utah like he was supposed to be? 
is he going to break up with me again? Probably. He revealed to her that he tested positive for HIV while undergoing an insurance policy exam. Through his tears, he told Cookie he understood if she wanted to leave him. But there was no way Cookie was going to give up on him. She didn't even care how he acquired it, even though there were a lot of rumors floating around. Some people were convinced he contracted the virus from a man, while others blamed his reckless lifestyle. Pamela McGee, a former USC and Olympic basketball player, as well as one of Magic's good friends, told the LA Times, knowing his flamboyant lifestyle, it was bound to happen sooner or later. She added that Magic was a womanizer and a major player. Magic admitted to Sports Illustrated he didn't know when, where, or which woman gave him the virus. But he did say that before he got married, he truly lived the bachelor's life. After Cookie and their unborn child tested negative for the virus, she committed herself to helping Magic get his health back on track. He told People Magazine that if Cookie had left him during that time, he probably would not have survived. Because of uh, the HIV virus that I have, attained, uh, I will have to retire from the Lakers uh, today. He was forced into retirement in 1991. In June 1992, she gave birth to their son, EJ. They wanted to have more children, but there weren't enough advancements in medicine to allow her to conceive naturally without infecting herself or their unborn baby. So when EJ turned two, they adopted a baby girl and named her Elisa. Magic desperately wanted to return to basketball, and Cookie wanted him to hang it up and get over it, or she would leave him. Oh, now she got a backbone. Magic told the LA Times that to get her to change her mind, he gave her a million dollars, and she finally agreed to allow him to return. That'll do it. <laughs> That'll do it. When they hit the 10-year mark of their marriage, Cookie told Oprah Winfrey she was busy raising their kids, both of whom were diagnosed with attention deficit disorder, while Magic was busy building his businesses. She said his ego was getting bigger and bigger, and they were drifting apart. In 2001, they quietly separated for two weeks before deciding to devote themselves to their marriage. In 2019, they celebrated their 28th wedding anniversary by posting sweet messages for each other on social media. In her message, Cookie wrote that they have an undying love that's uniquely theirs. As for Magic, he told Cookie that marrying her was one of the best decisions he had ever made. This ninja. With the best medical care in the world and a cocktail of medicine, Magic has managed to keep his HIV at an undetectable level, and he has never developed AIDS. He and Cookie have become high-profile advocates for HIV awareness and prevention. Although many might define their relationship as struggle love, Magic and Cookie are still going strong after 32 years of marriage, and we wish them nothing but the best.